Resuming debate, reprise the débat, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to rise this morning in response to the Honourable Member from Victoria's motion. Um, and I wanted to, to begin my remarks, Madam Speaker, um, by, by, by talking about some of the evidence that we have available to us um, about cannabis control and to draw some conclusions from that. Um, certainly an examination of the evidence tells us that cannabis use carries significant health risks, especially for people who use it frequently or to begin to use it at a very early age. The evidence also indicates that a public health approach focused on high-risk users and practices, similar to the approach favored with alcohol and tobacco in Canada, allows for more control over the risk factors associated with cannabis-related harm. And from this evidence, we can, can, can draw the conclusion that legalization, combined with strict health-focused regulation, will provide an opportunity to reduce the harms associated to cannabis use. Now, Madam Speaker, I don't want to repeat what the Minister of Justice has spoken about um, about the government's plans. I think she's, she's covered that more than adequately. But I did want to, to take this, this opportunity to just try to differentiate between our government's approach and what is proposed in this motion. And for example, on the issue of decriminalization, uh, Madam Speaker, models of cannabis decriminalization vary greatly, but they generally involve removing possession of small amounts of cannabis from the sphere of criminal law. Prohibition remains the rule, but sanctions for possession and use of cannabis instead become, criminal, excuse me, become civil violations punishable by a small fine. Now, unfortunately, Madam Speaker, this model fails to address several of the harms associated with the prohibition of cannabis use. Under decriminalization, cannabis remains unregulated, and this means that users know little or nothing about the potency or the quality of what they're purchasing. Far too often, the source of production in this country has been organized crime which is reckless to the, in the extreme of the safety impacts that it, and the health impacts it can have for Canadians. Madam Speaker, as long as cannabis use is illegal, it is difficult for healthcare or educational professionals to effectively address and prevent problematic use. The law enforcement focus on prohibition drives cannabis users away from prevention, risk reduction, and treatment services. Decriminalization may even encourage commercialization of cannabis production and distribution creating a world of opportunity for organized crime without giving government any additional regulatory tools. These activities remain under the control of criminal elements, and for the most part, users still obtain cannabis in the illicit market where they are exposed to other drugs and to criminal activity. In addition, in, under a decriminalization model, Madam Speaker, where the police are given the opportunity to, to issue tickets instead of proceeding with criminal charges, what we have seen in many other jurisdictions where such a, a practice has been followed, is that there is a net widening and a, and a far greater likelihood of people getting caught up in the enforcement net. In addition, fines have proven to be a regressive penalty in the sense that they place a disproportionate burden on low-income individuals. Now, Madam Speaker, in, in 2012, when asked, the Honourable Member from Outremont, the leader of the member opposite's party, was asked specifically, would you decriminalize marijuana? And I wanted to share with you his response. He said, no, I think that would be a mistake, because the information that we have right now is that marijuana is, that's on the market is extremely potent and can actually cause mental illness. He went on to suggest that we should get the best medical experts, the best legal experts, and the best law enforcement experts around the table to see what is realistic. Madam Speaker, this sounds remarkably like our plan to bring forward a task force to speak to the experts in science, health, justice, and law enforcement, and to get the best evidence, the best information from experts across the country to inform the government's development of a regulatory framework uh, for the regulation and control of marijuana. The, the member from Outremont said that to decide in advance that it should simply be open, I think, would be a serious mistake. And, Madam Speaker, I agree with him. Madam Speaker, legalization removes the social harms and costs of prohibition. Removing criminal and civil penalties for possession of cannabis would eliminate the more than $1 billion Canada spends annually to enforce and prosecute the marijuana possession laws. In a jurisdiction where cannabis production and distribution are legal and properly regulated, criminal involvement in these activities should shrink significantly and potentially disappear. But Madam Speaker, it's important to recognize that legalization alone does not reduce the health risks and the harms of cannabis. It presents governments with an opportunity, an opportunity to regulate cannabis to mitigate those risks something that cannot effectively be done under prohibition or decriminalization. Madam Speaker, we have also looked at the experience in other jurisdictions. 
A number of states in the United States have gone through the process of legalization of, of their recreational and, and medical markets. And they have shared with some lessons with us that I would like to share with this House. First of all, there, and this is in a report from the Canadian Centre for Substance Abuse uh, that did, a, did an analysis of lessons learned in Colorado and Washington State, and their first recommendation is to take the time required to develop an effective framework for implementation and to prepare for a successful launch. The interim measure that is proposed in this motion does none of those things. It urges us to develop the capacity to administer the regulatory framework, recognizing that a significant investment in staff and administration is required to process licenses, conduct comprehensive inspections, and to address violations. It urges us to invest proactively in a public health approach that builds capacity of prevention, education, and treatment before implementation to minimize negative health and social impacts associated with cannabis use. It urges us to invest in research to establish the evidence base and to conduct rigorous, ongoing data collection. Madam Speaker, that is the Government of Canada's plan. Our plan is to develop a strict regulatory framework based on a public health approach that will mitigate the harms and the, the health harms and the social harms of marijuana use. We are committed to taking the time to do this right. We are committed to being, bringing forth evidence-based policy based on the best evidence available to us from the fields of science, health, justice and law enforcement. We are committed to, to, to consult across this country to bring that evidence before this House and to ensure that the work that we do in bringing forth a regulatory framework achieves our public policy aims. Our public policy aims are clear. We intend to make Canada a safer place for our kids by protecting them from the harms that marijuana can have on the developing adolescent brain, to protect our communities from the damage and, and, and the violence and victimization brought about by organized crime through their involvement in the illegal drug trade, in particular the illegal marijuana trade, and to protect the health of Cana Canadians by ensuring a strict regulatory framework for the production, distribution, and consumption of cannabis that works for the health and the safety of all Canadians. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? The Honourable Member for Victoria. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague and friend from Scarborough for his uh, presentation. And um, I wanted to ask, I think, a very, a very simple question to him um, as a representative of the Minister of Justice. As you know, uh, Madam Speaker, it's federal prosecutors who are enforcing our marijuana possession laws from coast to coast. Uh, uh, apparently in Kelowna, there are tw 251 charges for 100,000 people for marijuana possession, whereas in St. John's, Newfoundland, there are 11 for, for 100,000. My question through you to the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of Justice is, does this discrepancy seem just? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I'd like to thank my friend from Victoria for his question. Um, we recognize that there is a disparity in the enforcement of these laws, and, and quite frankly, in the absence of other supportive evidence, it's difficult to determine whether that is a result of a different approach, uh, either by the police in the laying of charges or by the prosecutor in, in exercising their discretion, and I know that there are different approaches in the exercise of prosecutorial discretion in both British Columbia and, and in Newfoundland, or whether that, that, that disparity reflects a, a different pattern of use um, in those two jurisdictions. And in the absence of evidence, it's difficult to quantify. But we do recognize that there is disparity in the, in the enforcement of these regulations. And it's one of the reasons we are committed to legalization of marijuana, but, but not merely to reduce that particular social harm, but to all social harms and health harms. And this is an opportunity, as I've said, Madam Speaker, to, to, to an opportunity to bring in a strict and effective, comprehensive regulatory framework that will enable us to address all of the harms associated to cannabis use. Comments, questions, and commentaries. The Honourable Member for South Surrey, White Rock. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and, and I listened intently uh, uh, to the member as well as the uh, Minister of Justice, and we've heard the Prime Minister all state that, uh, that legalization is going to uh, uh, take it out of the hands of uh, organized crime and, 
and keep our s children safe. Well, you know, as we know, drug dealers aren't interested in keeping any drugs out of the hands of our kids, and they are, and they continue to diversify. So my question would be this: along with that premise um, of we're going to keep them safe, we're going to take it out of the the hands of organized crime, and everything's going to be great. Uh, so to extrapolate that, the street fentanyl, the oxycotton, the W18, the W series drugs, the ecstasy, and the cocaine which is on the rise, has been on the rise for quite some time. Uh, is there an intention to uh, legalize all of those as well? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the member opposite for her question. Our commitment has been very clear and precise. Our intention is to legalize, regulate and restrict marijuana in Canada, and, and we have not made any other comments. I will, I will tell you that this, this government is pursuing a public health approach with respect to all of our policies because of our commitment to keep our communities both safe and our citizens healthy. But our commitment has been very clear. We are going to legalize, regulate and restrict marijuana. Questions and comments? Uh, questions et commentaires. The Honourable Member for uh, Mary Miramichi Grand Lake, is it? No? Okay. Beaches East York. Speaker, I, I'm, I'm proud to be part of a government that ran on a platform of legalizing and regulating marijuana. Prohibition, as any expert will tell you, causes more problems than it proposes to solve. The answer is a regulatory framework based on evidence. But, of course, uh, we're moving towards legalization, not, not now, we're moving towards legalization a year from now. And my question for the Parliamentary Secretary is this. Uh, we face prohibition over this next year, and is not decriminalization a fairer option as a matter of scarce judicial resources and a matter of not affecting young people's lives negatively for no reason at all when we're legalizing within one year? A brief answer from the Parliamentary Secretary. Colleague from BC's East York for his question, Madam Speaker. Um, and again, let me be very clear. There are significant social and health harms associated to cannabis use. Currently, control of cannabis is exercised through an existing legislative framework that has been in place for over a century in this country. We propose, through, through the best advice of experts from across the fields of science, health, justice and law enforcement, to bring forward a proper, effective, comprehensive regulatory framework to replace the existing system of control. In the interim, it would be reckless in the extreme and, per, and perhaps create much greater risk for our communities to remove all control from, from cannabis, it would create opportunities for organized crime and put our children at risk. Resuming debate, reprise the debate.